Welcome to our tutorial on variables. Let's take a look at my script where I've declared four variables. Variable A is declared as an integer, B is declared as a single, C is declared as a double, and I've declared variable E as a string. The prefixes that precede my variables are not necessary, but they do help distinguish at a first glance what kind of variable we're dealing with. And here is a list of the commonly used prefixes for variables. This is by no means an exhaustive or the only standard that exists, but do keep it in mind. Variables A, B, and C have a green squiggly line under their names. This means that the variables haven't been used yet in my script. Variables can be declared and initialized at the same time. For example, here we have integer a declared as an integer and initialized with a value of 5. To initialize a string, we can do the following. Space equals space quotation marks and let's enter some text. Now we've declared and initialized the variable STRE. Let me take a moment to talk about what variables are. Variables are like boxes, or space allocated in the computer's memory to store a value, until that value is used somewhere in the program. Let's take a look at variable E, which we've initialized with the string test1. In other words, we've put this string into the variable. Below, on line 9, let's replace the value of variable E with a new string, test2. On line 10, we store the value of variable E in the text property of the label control LBL1. Now let's go to design view. Here are text boxes A and B. We can initialize a variable with a value that we retrieve from a text box. Tab. Let's comment out line 9. And let's run our program. By the way, you see here that we've got two warnings. Visual Basic is letting us know that variables B and C haven't been used yet. Now a quick look at our code will indicate that we technically haven't used variable A either, but we did initialize it with a value. So even though we haven't used it in our script yet, we don't see a warning about it being unused. Okay, let's enter some text in text box A, click the Click Me button, Variable E gets initialized with the value retrieved from the text property of text box TXT A. And in line 10, this value is passed to the text property of the label control LBL1. Let's return to our script. I'm going to copy this line. Let's right click and paste. By the way, you see here how I've typed the variable name int a in all lowercase letters. Up above, I've declared and initialized it with different casing. As soon as I click outside of this area, Visual Basic will correct the casing for me automatically. If I mouse over integer a, I can see some details about it. I see that it's declared as an integer and that the text property of label 1 stores this value as a string. Basically, Visual Basic automatically converted this integer into a string. I'm going to run my program again.
And here's the number 5. Let me enter a different number now, 5.4, which as you know is not an integer. Variable a is declared as an integer, so how will it handle this value which is not an integer? Let's run our program to check. The resulting value is 5. What Visual Basic has done is round this number to the nearest integer. If I enter 5.6, the resulting value is 6. Visual Basic cuts out everything after the decimal point, but does round to the closest integer. Let's now initialize integer A with the retrieved value of the text property of text box B. An implicit conversion will also take place. The string retrieved from the text box will be converted into an integer, and the resulting value will be stored in variable A. Let's run our program again. Let's enter the number 6 now. My display shows 6. If I enter some text, for example, the spelled out number 10, T-E-N, and click, we have a problem. The conversion failed. Visual Basic wasn't able to convert this string into a number. Let's do an explicit conversion. I'm going to type integer a space equal sign space integer dot parse parenthesis open variable e parenthesis close. What I've done now is use the parse method to convert my string into an integer. As a last step, I'm going to store this result in integer a. If we want to convert the string into a double, instead of into an integer, we can use double here. Of course, we'd need to replace variable a with a variable that can store doubles. Now before I pass the value from the text box to integer a, let's explicitly convert it to a string. Tab. And let's review what we've accomplished here. We've retrieved the value from text box a. We've stored it in variable e, a string data type. Next, we explicitly converted this value to the integer data type using the parse method. Then, we stored the value in integer a. In the next line, we convert this value back to a string using the toString method. We pass this value to the text property of the label control lbl1. Let's run our application now. We'll input a value into text box a. The value passes. Let's close our application. Now let's see what happens if we enter text in the text box. We'll enter some text. And we obviously have a problem. The input string wasn't in the correct format. Visual Basic is not able to convert the text into an integer. And this concludes our tutorial about variables.